Hey guys, Joe here with The Good Old Gamer, and tonight I wanted to do a short video about VRAM and exactly how much VRAM do you need to run a game at 4K. This has only recently become an issue, as Vega was shown in an architectural preview, and it only has 8GB of VRAM. It is HBM2, but still only 8GB for something that is supposed to be positioned to be facing Volta when it comes out next year, and the current Titan by NVIDIA, and... The Titan already has 12 gigabytes, and it's a safe bet to assume Volta will have around 12, if not more, as well. So, I decided to take a look into it, to browse around the web, which I have to do because, unfortunately, I do not have the technical capabilities, know-how, or the hardware to do the testing necessary to show you this stuff. So, I decided to look around, and I found only one article, because, surprisingly, this isn't something that is covered en masse. It's something that may be brought up per game, but not something people tend to catalog on a per-game basis. And I found one article on Tweaktown, and I'll have all the descriptions, in, I'm sorry, all the links in the description. And the article has uh, about seven or eight games, including Unigen Heaven, uh, which is just a benchmarking tool. And it shows exactly how much VRAM each game was using at 4K. Now, it shows it without anti-aliasing and with anti-aliasing. And I'll have the benchmarks uh, right here on the video for you, so you can go and look at them while I continue to talk. And we'll start out with Unigen Heaven, just because... It's not really a game, but you'll see that it uses just under 3 gigabytes of VRAM running at 4K. Next up, you'll see Metro and Battlefield 4. Now, Metro, without AA, uses 1593, and Battlefield 4 uses only 2326, and that's 2326 megabytes, 1593 megabytes, but still well under 8 gigabytes, obviously. If you add anti-aliasing, which is what you'll see, you'll see 2028 for Metro and 2988 for Battlefield 4. Again, both games well under even 3 gigabytes. Next up, you'll see Tomb Raider, which is 2675 without anti-aliasing, and The Witcher 3 at 3066 megabytes, just over 3 gigabytes without anti-aliasing. And if you look with the with anti-aliasing, you see Tomb Raider has 3296 and The Witcher 3, although they use HBAO, so I don't know why they don't use anti-aliasing. However, they tested it with HBAO, and it shows that three, uh, sorry, 3,246 megabytes, so just over 3 gigabytes for both games. Not a whole lot, obviously well under the 8 gigabytes that Vega will be coming out with. Now we have Far Cry 4 and Shadow of Mordor. Far Cry 4 is at 3699, Shadow of Mordor at 3963. With anti-aliasing, Far Cry hits a whopping 5773 and Shadow of Mordor at 5433. Although Shadow of Mordor, again, it says AO, um, so ambient occlusion, not anti-aliasing. However, you can see there's a huge hit either way. And then lastly, I'm going to show you GTA 5, because GTA 5 is the one on the article that seems to use the most VRAM. It starts out at 4321 without anti-aliasing and hits 6392 with anti-aliasing. And that's a big, big number. Considering GTA 5 came out three years ago now, almost four actually. Is it four? Might be four. Um, and it's hitting, I mean, still under eight gigabytes, but over six gigabytes of VRAM necessary to run it with anti-aliasing. And by the way, all these games are running at the highest graphical settings possible. So the question is, with these games that came out at least two, three, four years ago, because this article is from a year and a half ago, is this kind of indicative of a, of a trend where the games are going to begin to use more anti-aliasing, I'm sorry, more VRAM with anti-aliasing and without. So, just to go further, I decided to look for more modern games, which is a little bit tougher. Um, but before we do that, I just want to show you real quick. We have Battlefield 4 and Shadow of Mordor here, which shows it, again, I'm going to pull them back on the screen, and it shows them at 8K resolution. That's the bottom number you see there, not 4K. I know it trips you up if you don't look for it. And Battlefield 4 is at 5190 without anti-aliasing, 7568 with anti-aliasing. And Shadow of Mordor, because it doesn't give us a without anti-aliasing number for some reason, it shows it at 8468, so just over 8 gigabytes of RAM for Shadow of Mordor. And that is pretty intense. That's a lot of VRAM necessary to game at 8K. But I just want to point out that that is at 8K, and that both of these games at 4K resolution, and both of these games, by the way, are very good-looking games. Um, at 4K, they're gorgeous. I mean, they're gorgeous well be below 4K, but at 4K, they are amazing looking games, and they are both well under, but at 8K, Battlefield 4 still doesn't hit the 8 gigabyte mark, only Shadow of Mordor does, goes just over. So, I just wanted to show you that, that's at 8K, it's really, it's only hitting 
above 8 gigabytes when we hit to 8K. Which so, But again, these are old games. So let's move to the more modern games. As I said, I decided to look around, and I had to look on a per-game basis. And I found Far Cry Primal, which is a more modern game, very beautiful game, at 3847. And that is at its ultra settings. It doesn't give us an indication whether or not it uses anti-aliasing, but I'm assuming it does. And that's at 3847. That's a modern game, still only using just under 4 gigabytes. Next up, we have Doom. Doom is using 4063 megabytes and 5271 on its Nightmare Ultra settings. Now, Nightmare Ultra settings is just a setting. Uh, there's two settings in the game that you can bump up to Nightmare. It's just a shadowing and whatnot. Um, but it does bump up VRAM just over a gigabyte from 4063 to 5271. And this is Doom at 4K. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous game. And this is what I found, this screenshot for you. You can tell there's not a huge difference between the two settings, but still a gorgeous game running at only just over 5 gigabytes at 4K. So next up, we have Battlefield 1, which sits at 50, 20, 5,020 megabytes, just over 5 gigabytes for Battlefield 1, which is a very modern game, very beautiful game running on the Frostbite engine. It's an absolutely stunning game. And I played in 1440p, if you're playing in 4K, even more beautiful. And I, I mean, I cannot stress that enough. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous game. Again, just over 5 gigabytes. Still under 8. And then we have Titanfall 2. Now, Titanfall 2, I'm going to show you a couple numbers here. The first of which is that it shows it running on a RX 480 using anti-aliasing and hitting 4178. And that's Titanfall 2. Again, good-looking game, right? And that's on the RX 480. And this is important because the RX 480 actually has... 8 gigabytes of VRAM. It also shows you on the GTX 1060, which is the 3 gigabyte model, running at 2889. So just under 3 gigabytes of VRAM usage, because honestly there's not any more to use. Uh, but the interesting thing is you can look at the frame rates. It's 71 to 69. That's a pretty interesting thing, isn't it? That one has the VRAM available to use with 4178 of it being used on the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 still without with with less than a gigabyte of VRAM I'm sorry with one less one gigabyte less than it would need at the 4178 still running at 2889 and only two frames behind so that kind of caught my eye and I it kind of brought some things into perspective for me and I can't really find definitive information for some reason it's not exactly a talked about thing but what this says to me, and what this should say to you, that depending on the game and the systems that it uses, not having enough VRAM will not necessarily kill your experience. And this just goes to show you that you can still have 8 gigabytes of VRAM if a game uses more and still run the game at its highest graphical settings with little to no hit. So it very much depends on the game, but still, is 8 gigabytes enough? Obviously, for these games, it would be, and these are the more modern games we could find. So, what else can I look into? I decided to find the most modern game that I could possibly find, and that is Resident Evil 7. Because Resident Evil 7 was literally released about a week ago. And Resident Evil 7, which I'll show up on the screen here for you, uses just over 8 gigabytes of VRAM at 4K. 8079. So, the question is, is this indicative of all games going forward and the answer is no they even talk about in the short article here that this game is intended the system is intended to load as much as it possibly can onto the video card so that it has the information available not every game does that not every game uses a system or an engine that requires that so this one does however as it also says in the article with much less vram the game still runs at very high settings and looks gorgeous and this is, of course, a VR intended title. So perhaps if you're thinking about using VR, this might be more indicative of a need to have more than eight gigabytes of VRAM because with VR, obviously the game has to do everything twice in order to fully immerse you. So perhaps in the future, you might need more of that strictly based on a VR perspective. However, as, it, as again, as the article says, with less VRAM available, it still runs and looks pretty good. So, Again, even with Resident Evil 7, the most modern game I could find, 8 gigabytes is still not a deal breaker. So the question going forward is for you guys, really, what do you think? If the information I've shown you prompts you to look into it yourself, you'll see, I think, that 8 gigabytes of VRAM 
is enough. I mean, we went from games that came out three, four years ago, the lowest of which is Metro Last Light, which runs at 1593 without anti-aliasing. And I stress that because some people use AA and some people don't. It's a preference thing. I mean, if you want to bump up your resolution from 1080 to 1440 or whatever, it kind of has its own anti-aliasing effect there. So you might not use it as a result. But anyway, the lowest is 1593 on Metro. The most modern game I can find uses 8, but it is kind of an outlier considering. So I look at Far Cry, I look at Doom, I look at Battlefield 1 and Titanfall, and Metro, which is not the oldest game on this list, by the way, I mean, we're going from 1593 all the way up to about 5,000. So just over 5 gigabytes of VRAM. And those are the more modern games. I mean, that's Battlefield 1, just using just over 5 gigabytes. It's not necessarily indicative, though, of the textures. I mean, they will find ways to add more and more information into each texture, and it, yes, in the future, probably in the next five to six years, eight, gigab 8 gigabytes of VRAM will not be enough to run a game at 4K. I can't say that for sure, but I can say that while there does seem to be a trend upward, we're not at a point yet where 8 gigabytes is not enough. And again, that's going to depend on the system. So think about that when you're deciding whether or not you want to upgrade to Vega or even to the 1080 if you haven't yet. 8 gigabytes is still enough to run every modern game out there at its very high settings, um, depending on the card, that is, uh, even including Resident Evil 7. So when you're deciding whether or not that's enough, or if you think you heard it only has 8 gigabytes, and you think, wow, that's, that's ridiculous. And I know Chris and I have said that before. We've said that in our previous videos, that we didn't think 8 gigabytes is, is enough. That just doesn't seem right. Um, it apparently is, and it apparently will be going forward. Even at 8K, it handled Battlefield 4, except for Shadows of Mordor, obviously it wasn't. But, I, you know, there's no FPS there to indicate how it actually ran at 8K. Uh, but obviously, even at 8K, even if you have a Titan, it's not going to run too well. Um, but that might not necessarily be because of the lack of VRAM available. So I just wanted to get that out there. Again, short video just to let you know, 8 gigabytes is not the end of the world. Pr don't hold it against AMD if they only have 8 gigabytes on Vega. And definitely don't worry about it if it's a GTX 1080 either. 8 gigabytes will do you going forward, probably for at least the next few years before you are ready to upgrade again, uh, or maybe well beyond the time you're ready to upgrade again, you might need it. But for now, 8 gigabytes is good. And that's all I've got. You guys have a good night, and I will see you in the next video. If you like our content, feel free to subscribe and like the, this video specifically. And uh, send Chris some love. Chris isn't available at the moment to be part of the videos. He's got some stuff going on, some good stuff, by the way. It's good stuff, but uh, I'm sure he's missing the love, too. So give him a shout-out, and I will see you guys in the next video.